What's going on gardeners? It's Tuesday, September 13th and summer is winding down here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And if you're like me, your fig trees still have a ton of green figs on them that you may think have no chance of ripening before the end of the season. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not too late. Not if you do this right now. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. When it comes to growing most fruit trees, they work on a very similar pattern. They flower in early spring, they set their fruit in late spring, and then they ripen the entire crop of fruit throughout the summer for harvest at some point between late summer or sometime during the fall. Figs, on the other hand, are completely different. You've never seen a fig tree flower, at least in the traditional sense, and that's because the fig itself is not a true fruit. It is a syconium, which is a collection of hundreds of inverted flowers. If you've ever cut a fig open and you see all of those little white striations inside, each one of those striations are individual inverted flowers. It's for that reason that all figs must be ripened on the tree. Once they're picked, they begin to wither and die. Just like once you pick a flower, that flower begins to wither and die because that's what you're really doing. You're picking a big bag of inverted flowers. So if you've only had those grocery store figs that are available a few weeks a year and you think you don't like figs, well, all of those figs are picked well before they're actually ripe because they'll be damaged in shipment because a truly ripe fig is like a bag of jelly. They just can't be shipped. So the only way to truly try a ripe fig is to grow it yourself. Because most species of fruit trees produce all of their blooms and set all of their fruits within a very narrow window of time, once all of those fruits are set, they don't have all that many more life processes that they need to direct their energy into, so they tend to be very efficient at ripening the crop of fruit that they set on the tree. Fig trees, on the other hand, are completely different. Figs produce their main crop of figs along the New Year's growth. So as long as you have New Year's wood that is continually growing, they will set new figs. They do not have a defined fruiting period, so they will continue to produce new figs throughout the year as long as the new wood continues to form nonstop. So while most species of fruit trees at this time of year are placing almost all of their energy into ripening the crops of fruits that they already produced, fig trees are wasting gobs of their energy producing all of these new figs that have no chance of ripening throughout the year. And that is robbing the fruits that do have a chance of ripening from actually ripening. And it's why figs tend to take so long to mature. I mean, look at the insane number of figs all over this fig tree, and the figs at the top have basically no chance of ever ripening before it gets too cold. So what are we supposed to do so we can actually maximize the harvest from the number of figs on this tree that actually have a shot of ripening before it gets too cold out? So what we're going to do is we're going to force our fig trees to do what most other species of fruit trees do naturally, and that is focus almost all of the tree's energy into ripening the figs that have a chance of actually ripening during this growing season. And I have about 60 days left in the year before I get my first frost. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm going to do to maximize my harvest on this tree so it doesn't waste any additional energy on fruits that have no chance of ever ripening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually remove every single fig on this tree that is way too small and will never ripen. And I'm also going to pinch off every single growth point on this tree so it stops putting its energy into vigor. That way it can focus on the figs mostly on the bottom of the tree and put almost 100% of its energy into ripening those instead of wasting its time with all of this top growth. Now the one thing I do recommend is you put on latex or vinyl gloves beforehand because these trees are flowing richly with sap right now and it's a very caustic latex based sap that will give you rashes. So make sure you wear some kind of protection on your hands. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off all of the figs that are uh, way too small and will not ripen throughout the year. So I'm just going to pop them off and I'm going to throw them on the ground and they will uh, they will act as basically a living mulch. And I'm going to pull off any growth tips up at the top. So I discourage any new vegetative growth because at this point in the year, it's just a giant waste of energy for this tree. I'll also pull off any rusted disease leaves. So I'm going to go around to every single branch and I'm going to pull off the smallest figs that are way up at the top and pinch off those growth points. And we're going to do that for every single fig tree in my collection. And, what's that, and what that is going to do is that is going to 
maximize the amount of energy uh, that the fig tree is going to put into the fruits near the bottom that are much larger and actually have a decent prayer of ripening before it starts getting too cold in late October. Now let me bring you in for a closer look with this branch right here. One thing that I've learned is that when it comes to doing this, because the sap is so caustic, you want to start from the bottom and work your way up because if you start from the top and work your way down, the sap is going to drip all over you from the top as you work down. So that is a big no-no. Now these figs right here may actually have a chance of ripening. They're not all that small. So we're gonna leave them. We're gonna pop off these two little figs right here and then we're going to expose this growth tip right here and we are simply going to snap that, gro that uh, growth tip off and you'll see that's going to drip sap everywhere but we want to make sure that we don't get that on our skin or on our clothes because that's very caustic so we're going to go around and we're going to continually do this to all of our different branches we'll do the same thing to this fig branch right here there's no way these figs up top are going to have any chance of ripening before the end of the season so we'll snap all of them off and remember we're throwing all of these spoils on the ground uh, because this will make great mulch we are also going to break off all of these growth tips you can see I have a growth tip here that's useless there's a growth tip here that's useless and then there is this main green growth tip on top we snap that off because that is useless. And that is going to hopefully uh, help prevent this fig tree from placing all of its energy into the vigor process and setting new figs because if we can stop the growth of new wood on the tree, we will also stop the growth of new figs on the tree. The same exact thing holds true for our fig trees that we're growing in containers. There's no way these little tiny figs up here are going to have any chance of ripening. So we can just snap them right off and just like we did with our in-ground trees, we're also going to snap off the growth tip on top because we don't want the trees to continue to put more vigor, uh, to put more energy into vegetative vigorous growth. We want them to focus on ripening the figs that are actually on the tree and have a chance of ripening before the season ends. And please don't be afraid to do this. I know that it may seem painful for some of you to break fruit off of a tree, but uh, they, they're not gonna ripen anyway. It's not a big deal. It's not going to hurt the tree in any way, shape, or form. And you will be rewarded handsomely by, uh, if you do this because you will be given more energy into the figs that have a chance of ripening and therefore bigger harvests. And that right there is how you can basically maximize your harvest by tricking your fig trees into putting as much energy as possible into ripening the viable fruit crop that has a chance of ripening before it gets too cold. And I recommend you do this every year to your fig trees once you see that you're getting to be about 60 to 90 days away from your first frost. It's a good practice to do this and focus that energy that's left in the fig tree into ripening those fruits that have a chance. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use for real in my garden, they are all linked down in the video description in my Amazon storefront. So check that out if you want to see what garden products I use for real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Hey Dale, check it out buddy. Two days in a row, our buddy is back. Look at that big old gator in there. Look at that gator head. He's hanging out in just about the same exact spot. Staying nice and cool. That's so cool. I love watching the gators in the pond. Wow. It's a much nicer day today, Dale. It's nice and clear. It's not as humid. And Dale is eating grass because apparently he's part cow. Dale, Dale, we don't need no grass-fed hound. We don't need a grass-fed hound dog, buddy. We don't need a grass-fed hound dog. No, no, no. Come on, stop. Don't do that. It'll make your belly upset. This is what I deal with. Gators on the left, grass-eating dogs on the right.